Hey there guys, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU. Back with part three of the Evo Rockskin Builder Corners and part two of the Fab Series that I have planned for these. Today, we're gonna to be covering my plans for how I'm gonna go about building my tube flares. So let's get into it. All right guys, so last night I finished wrapping up painting the inner side of the rock skin builder corners. I went ahead and mounted it up and I've already started laying out some of the groundwork for the tube flare that I'm gonna be building. So this is the part that I'm really excited for. We're gonna finally start talking about the tube flares that I have envisioned to fabricate on Project Vector. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the tube work that I'm doing for my fender flares. So first thing that I did was I decided, okay, what materials do I wanna use? So I figured one and a half inch by 120 wall tubing. Um, I wasn't able to pick up DOM tubing, that would have been my preference. So I just went with standard tubing. So basically what I started off with is determining that I wanted to have my tube lengths right about three and a half inches and I want to cut with a 10 degree taper. So basically what I did was I measured from the flat surface to the longest surface, measured that to be three and a half inches and I cut backwards into it. And that's going to give me just a little bit of a slant. So I'm not going to be a true flat fender, which I kind of, I want to be something a little bit different. I like the idea of having something that kind of match that factory fender flare look where it does have that slant to it. And so what I did was I ran and I did eight of the three and a half inch blanks. So I have four for each side. And then I did four two and a half inch blanks, two for each side. And the two and a half match the same 10 degree taper. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be joining tube to tube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch the connecting tubes. I'm gonna slide those in between each of these posts. I think that's gonna be a pretty cool look. And then other things that you might notice. So I do have these tubes mounted up pretty high or at least far away from the opening of the wheel well. I'm doing this because if I ever decide to upgrade tire size or if I want to allow my tire to get further up into the fender well, these won't be as soon of an issue to worry about and I can actually come back and I can cut more material out of the, the rock skin builder corner as well as I can cut and either fold or remove the pinch seam on the body behind it and that'll allow the tire to go up further into the fender well. So that's the main reason why I'm putting the tube work so far away from the fender opening. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the tube off. I'm gonna go over all my pencil lines with a marker just to highlight them a little bit better. And then I'm gonna figure out exactly how I want to have each of these tubes rotated because they're not all gonna be in the exact same orientation. So what I'm doing is basically I'm gonna take half of the angle and I'm gonna make sure that my 10 degree is going basically right at half of the angle of which the two lines are coming off of. That way the entire form of the flare is always sort of tapering downward, so. All right, so one other thing I wanna cover real quick before I start welding up everything here is, so prior to setting everything up, after I cut everything on the bandsaw, which you can see here is the profile a little bit. So I got my 10 degree taper and a flat edge here. I used the Harbor Freight bench sander and I used both the, the belt and the disc sander to basically clean up the faces as well as polish the perimeter of the tubing. That'll make it so I don't have any of the mill scale so the weld can penetrate and be a little bit better getting into the material. One thing I'm gonna do also before I start welding is I'm gonna wipe everything down with acetone, the tubes and the body panel, just to make sure it's all clean and I'm gonna get good penetration with my weld. Alrighty guys, so I got my work surface cleaned with acetone, prepped and ready to go. I also beveled the inner edge of the tube so that that way when I put in the weld, I'll be able to get a good root. And got our ground on, ready to weld. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with just putting three tacks on this piece. And then I'm gonna place the next one to get an approximate measurement and then we'll work from there. All right, so what I'm doing next is I need to cut the tube that's gonna be going between these two posts. So measuring center to center, I'm right at 14 and a half inches. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. All right guys, so got my 14 and a half cut. Looks about right. We're right about uh, halfway on each of the tubes. So next thing to do is figure out the angle that I need to have this notched at. So what I used was just this adjustable angle finder. So what I did was I kind of put it here Line it along the same direction as the two, butt it up against the steel and found it. And I just lined this guy up to my protractor. And when I did so, I found that it was 
89 degrees. So it's almost perpendicular. So I'm gonna have two degrees, so it's just gonna be one degree, and I think that's gonna be really tough to actually measure with my tube notcher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take it over there. I'm gonna go ahead and notch out one side and notch out the other side just with a 90 degree. And I think it should be all right. There might be a little bit of a gap. Fortunately, it'll be on the back side though. So that's not nearly as big of an issue because I just wanna make sure that I have a nice tight fit on the front sides. So with that, basically I need to figure out what is my distance that those notches need to be placed at. So I am at 12 and 7 eighths for the tightest point. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark my tube and that's where I'm gonna be shooting to hit for the two tightest areas where the notching will be on this tube. All right, so we got our first tube notch. Let's go ahead and see how it fits. All right, gotta say that I am really happy with how tightly that fit. There's very little play and it's nice and flush. So this is the first piece. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is just making the rest of the posts and then connecting them with similar cut pieces just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep putting this together. Alrighty guys, so here's the first look at the concept that I kind of have in mind. You finally can now see and get a better visualization of what my intent was with my fender flares. So I still have a few things I need to go back and do to finish it up before I do all the welding. But one thing I want to mention real quick is so when I was making each of these lengths that were spanning between the different posts, I actually cut the exact same tube and notched it exactly the same so that I already have the matching pieces for the passenger side when I get there. The reason I wanted to do this is because I didn't want to go through the hassle of measuring, second guessing my cuts and making sure everything lines up right. Because with having all of the post locations marked, and I know exactly the rotation that the posts are going to be at due to having the 10 degree taper on the backside. All these connecting tubes should come very close. Now, when I go to tack in each of the posts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in these tubes. I'm going to first sort of hold them in place. So I'll tack in one, I'll hold the tube in place and make sure that this guy's lined up right and then I'll tack him in. That way I can put the connecting tubes in and out. But this will make sure that I have a very similar, if not completely symmetrical design from driver's side to passenger side. And that's something I definitely want to make sure that, you know, both sides look very close to the same, if not identical. So the next couple of things that I got to do is I'm going to take out all of these connecting tubes. I'm going to go ahead and finish weld around the entire perimeter of all of the posts. And then what I'm going to do is I will come in and I'll probably start tacking in one section at a time. So I know this one's going to be going from the outside to the outside of the tube. So I can tack him into place. But this one here, I'm actually going to be kicking them back and you can see I have a little bit of post extended beyond. So once I figure out exactly the angles that I want these guys to all to line up, I'm going to cut my posts so they're flush to the outside connecting tubes. Similarly with the very ends as well. So these four all need to be cut to match their tubes. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and finish well all my posts and start moving on to cutting down the extra lengths of the posts off. Alright guys, so I finished welding the posts onto the builder corner. And I went ahead and I tacked in the center bar here. The other ones are just sitting in place right now. The next thing that I need to figure out what I want to do is how much of the post on the lower two on both sides need to be cut off. Because obviously with what I'm doing is I'm looking to taper the flare. So this is the widest point and it tapers into the body as it goes down both front and rear. And so I initially just had these lengths cut extra because I wasn't sure where the tubes were going to land and I wanted to allow for a little bit of play front and rear to figure it out. So what I've done so far is I've kind of laid out and I'm using a straight edge. So I have a yardstick over here and what I'm doing is I'm kind of lining up saying, okay, I know I want this tube to be tight to the body and I'm kind of just lining it up and bringing it up to this point here. And then I'm kind of aligning my two tubes here. So they come down in a good angle all the way down. Now, what I kind of wanted to do was actually have it so it's parallel to the body, slightly tapers in, and then tapers in more on the third junction. But I didn't build out the top far enough to be able to do so. So what I'm going to be doing is just making a straight line from the lower point here back up to this tube. And I'm going to make these guys as straight as possible. And then likewise in the rear, I'm actually going to kick it out away from the body a little bit because basically what I want is this tube at this point in height forward to be kind of near matched what the distance from the body is here. That way I think I'll just look cleaner that way. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and with the connecting tubes in place, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the approximate line that I need to cut. And then I'm gonna come over either with my angle grinder with a cutoff wheel or with my sawzall. And I'm gonna go ahead and chop off the extra length of tubes and then start getting ready to tack weld on the rest of the tubes. All right, so I just went through and I polished up all my tubes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start tacking these guys into place. And what I'm gonna be using is just a square or some sort of a straight edge. And I'm just gonna basically butt it up to the ends of the post and make sure that my tube is pulled tight to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just lay a tack on the outside edges just for now. And then what I'll do is I'll lay another tack on the inside and move on from there. Yeah. All right guys, so once I let the welds cool, I was able to slowly take off each of the screws. So I started from here and worked my way back and it wasn't deforming too much away from the body. So I felt pretty confident that I'd be able to get it back into place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna weld the insides of these tubes on the underside because it'll be a lot easier with access with it off. Weld those up and then I'll put it back on the body again. And then I will come back and I will finish off with plating the top surfaces. So, all right guys, so we got the builder corner mounted back on the Jeep. It went on decent enough. So I'll be able to take it off one more time, I think, without any issue once I finish capping off the top of the tubes with this plate. And at that point, I'll be able to paint it all. All right, so we got the Jeep flipped around the garage now, and we're gonna start working on the passenger side. So basically to give you guys just a little run through of kind of how I laid everything out. So you saw me lay out and put markings on the driver's side. So I figured out my height, and then I determined from the center point how, what, how long I want my first tube to be mark those two points and then I used a tape measure and I made some arcs and I figured out okay based on the length I want I have an arc and then I'm measuring off of perpendicular from this point here of the builder corner down similarly did the same thing arced it measured down back here arced it and measured vertically down perpendicular from the top of the builder corner and then one more time arc from there to here and vertically down with that, I was able to match the exact same points for all six of my posts. I already have them all cut. They're cut to matching lengths. So all I have to do is basically just put everything in, tack it up, and then I can go ahead and just weld everything together. I also already went through and I cut the connecting tubes to match what I did on the driver's side because everything geometry should be symmetrical and so it should all work out to be very close. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do a little bit different this time is rather than putting both posts in, and having them welded complete. I'm gonna tack one in, and before I tack in the second, I'm going to bring in the connecting tube, and I'm gonna verify that that location is correct. Once I know that it is correct, then I can move the connecting tube out of the way, and I can go and tack this into place. So I'm still going to do a double check on all that to make sure that I don't have too large of a gap, or it's too tight of a fit to be able to fit the tubing in. All right, guys, so I already started working in on getting the passenger side tube work done. And you can see I had to take one of the posts off. I've already made my first error, so I forgot to bring over the connecting link and check it before I put it in place. So I welded it on, ends up that it was a little bit too tight. That's where the importance is. If you already have pre-cut tubes that are set up and ready to be welded in place, you need to make sure that you set this up and you do a check before you tack it in. But more importantly, always tack your work first because if you go through and you fully weld something and realize, oh crap, that wasn't right, it's a lot more work to break a full circular bead of weld around a tube than it is to break off three easy tacks. So fortunately I caught it and I caught it before I moved on to the last post. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grind that clean, clean it one more time, reprep, check with the measurement, make sure this is all working out properly. And I'm gonna show you guys how I go about doing that. All right guys, so we have the weld removed. I just cleaned the surface with a little bit of acetone and I'm re-cleaning up the tubing as well with some acetone. I already cleaned this guy off with my angle grinder, made sure that he was good and smooth and ready to go again. So now we just gotta do is set up the placement for this guy. So what I'm gonna be doing here is placing the tube, my fourth link here, in approximately the location that he needs to be to then identify where this tube needs to go. And so with this, I'm gonna try to line this all up so all the geometry, all the lines that I had preset that are scribed into the body panel are aligned correctly. Make sure that the rotation with the 10 degree taper is set up properly as well. And then setting the distance of the tube from the body panel approximately where it should be as well. 
All right, so right about there looks like it is the correct placement. So I'm just gonna get it close. I'm gonna remove the two. And I'll place my magnets here to hold it in place until I tack it down. All right, now with that, what we'll do is we'll come back in with our piece, go ahead and place them, check for fitment. Everything looks like it's good. So we're gonna move on to the next link. So yeah, so made a quick little error there. And that's the importance of just doing prep work. Make sure you do some tacks, tack welds in first before you do a final weld. Make sure everything fits and is lined up properly. And then once you get through that, then go ahead and finish burn everything in. Should all work out just right. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And next time, we're gonna be getting into the details of how I'm gonna go about capping off the tube work for my tube flares. It's gonna include the top plates as well as the end caps. So stick around for that. Otherwise guys, we are Victor Vector JKU. We are taking on this build and the trails, both direction and magnitude. All right guys, have a good one. We'll catch you next time.